like this. I hope you are ready. It is great to see you all here. A very warm welcome to you all on behalf of the Professional Triathletes Organization, the PTO, as this wonderful venue once again plays host this time to the 2022 Collins Cup. We have got a stellar cast. We have been selected to represent the teams from the US, from Europe, and the internationals, and they will do battle over a series of 12 races to see who rules the sport of triathlon. Triathlon, at this moment in time, stands atop the podium. You men and women have been blessed with your talent, which you have worked diligently to perfect. I ask you all to continue the great tradition of being outstanding role models in the sport of triathlon. You have no idea yet where your podium will take you. You will have to stand strong as a group to keep what is rightfully yours. You are all role models and will be humbled in the years to come. And I thank all those who have put you in this magnificent space. The time for talking is almost done. It is nearly over to the action. We will find out this Saturday, the 20th of August, who will be crowned the Collins Cup champion for 2022. Yeah, there's no question when you get here, you feel like this is championship mode. The, the athletes on those Collins Cup teams all starting to kind of get their game face on now as we get closer to the event. There's pressure there. These guys are proud and they know that, look, everyone's gunning for them. You can see occasionally the pressure just getting to them is never a good thing. And you can see it when some athletes just go over the top. The Collins Cup is the pinnacle of the season. It's going to be a lonely effort for me. I'd still give them a run for their money. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident about that. At this time, I generally feel prepared for the race. Both of them, I could be chasing or being chased. Maybe I'll see her a couple of times on the run. Let's talk tactics. <laughs> <laughs> what this guy just said that he could beat us if there wasn't a swim is uh, absolutely the farthest thing from the truth. I think okay, skip, skip, skip this thing about St. George. Skip the thing about yeah. St. George. No, yeah, skip the swim about St. George. That's the only time we raced. Yeah, I was hit by a car nine days before. Okay, sorry. But yeah, maybe you'll make fun of me for getting hit by a car too. That would be very much in your character. Saturday will be fun, but I mean, it's not really fun. We all want to win, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, like I feel I have the pressure on and he's coming here without any pressure. Like what do you do when you're coming from short distance over to long? Because I'm the best prepared. Just say I'm I'm fully tapered into this one, so I'll uh, I'll give Stretch. it all. He's <laughs> um, gonna need it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why I had to sit in the middle, otherwise things yeah, would yeah. get uh, yeah. tense. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I feel like I'm the least confident of the team. So, <laughs> so. as soon as gun go, let us like like switch off, and it's just. Yeah, try and get to that line first. Oh, I've, I haven't won nothing compared to you yeah, two guys. Yeah, you have won 0.73s. And I'm still going to beat you. I've won nothing. I've won a zero seven, no 7.3s, 7 no Ironmans. Yeah. And, I'm, and nobody's going to beat you. I think this is something I'm very used to, so maybe this can play into my cards. Maybe I will run out of real estate at the end, but who knows? Like, I, I also like to push myself. There's a degree of respect that can come <laughs> in this sport. I think you take it serious, too seriously. Too seriously? Yeah, I have a, I have a lot of respect for athletes, um, and I just think you take the sport a bit too seriously, yeah. Perhaps you should show that respect to other athletes. Okay, okay, Sam. All right, here we yeah. go. Here we we'll go. We'll settle it on the race. We got some beef. We got beef up in here. Yeah. Woo! And I'll get to be right in the middle of it. I'm scared of him, I'm not going to lie to yeah. you. I'm generally <laughs> pissed off, and I'm not normally pissed off in the sport of triathlon, and I'm pretty sure this guy's going to be getting cramps and making excuses out there afterwards. I think we got what we came for. Yes, <laughs> yes, you did. Thank you, guys. We'll see you later. <laughs> well, I'll you this way. Collins Cup returns. The biggest team event in triathlon is back once again. 
These are the best professionals in the world. Once that gun goes off, it is all business. Most time for the talking to stop and the action to begin. The 2022 Collins Cup is about to get underway. Well, this is it. Three into one does not go, but who will stand tallest at the end of the day and who will lift the Collins Cup in 2022? The reigning Olympic champion and world champion. I think it would be kind of cool to battle against her. After last year, especially, I, I want to perform well. Once the gun goes off, you can change into a completely different person. I want to win. I'm here to win. I welcome anyone. We are favorites because we have a title to defend. Don't be defeated before the gun even goes off. Race like someone's going to catch you, give 110% is the start of something bigger than just ourselves as professional athletes in the sport. Team Europe has become even stronger than what we were last year. We're all coming in hungry and we have absolutely nothing to lose here. What we've been putting on the line and what we've sacrificed to get to this level. Strategically, I do believe we can actually win. When race day comes, I, I will be ready mentally. I'm feeling confident that Team International feeling confident. Pushing until the finish and giving it your all on the day. Yeah, I'm really honored to get the chance to race here. much closer than I would have anticipated. She understands the importance of a fast start. The first of the Collins Cup athletes, Flora Duffy, hit short. That is Daniela Reef, who's not far behind. Another yellow cap for Team International, looking over her shoulder with a large gap back to Chelsea Sodaro and Laura Phillip. This is Paula Finlay here, just about to come out of the water. She has managed to put a little bit of a gap, definitely not very sizable and not definitive at this point. Danielle has gone straight to the front. The two of them last year at this event swam shoulder to shoulder. Are we going to see a complete rematch of that? So fantastic start for Team International, and they are right together still. Brazilian Vitoria Lopez out of the water. Nicholas Spearig storming to the front in match four. This is the box office while the men's matches are starting in match seven. Olympic champion, Ironman world champion, Olympic bronze medalist, and Ben Canute all going head to head to head here. Ben Canute is going out pretty strongly here. And we have seen the first pass of the day. Daniela looking like Daniela of old and just laying it down. And yes, he has caused a rather large ruckus this week. He's excited to prove a point after what's been said. Sam Laidlow doesn't need any wetsuit. That guy is flying on top of the water. That it's going to be a very, very large lead for Sam Laidlow out of the water. She's now 2.15 ahead. And they're getting out so quickly here, really fighting for every inch in the water. This looks like an overtake by the international team right there. We need to start making this time back up on Sam Laidlaw, and that's exactly what they're doing. Sam Long said several times, you know, you know, what, I hope you cramp. The whole Collins Cup might just come down to these athletes. So expect them to be close. Doesn't want to see any other athlete all day long. When Daniela Reef is on her A game, that is going to probably be the fastest bike of the day. So they are closing that down with every kilometer. Ashley Gentle overtaking Laura Phillip there. Well, Paula Finley then, again, having a great run. But Nicholas Spirig at the moment in that driving seat. The Europeans have moved into a sizable lead. Lionel Sanders now, for the first time today, has moved in the lead. Magnus having an unbelievable ride. As we can see, poor Sam Laidlow has 
stopped and is struggling. You can see Sam Laidlow headlong. He looks very, very dejected right now. Is this sweet justice for Sam Long? Because, I mean, Sam Long said, I hope you cramp. Wow, I didn't, I really did not expect this to happen. And she will have an incredible victory for Europe here as Daniela Reef claims maximal points. Yeah, at the moment, Team US are struggling for race victory. It's Ashley Gentle takes a win in wave number two. Paula Finley is going to claim victory and maximal points. The international team going into the lead. And Nicola Spirig is going to take this one in match four. Holly Lawrence, job done for Team Europe. Team Europe are doing the job at the moment, 52 and a half points. He is in full flight now, Christian Blumenfeld. And look, he's lapping up this crowd. Lon Lionel Sanders puts his foot down. And look, he has left Sam Long in his wake. He has done it back-to-back -back victories here. A dominating performance by the 24-year-old as Team Europe continues to pile up the wins. Aaron's winning his matchup for Team International. Second time victory now for Europe, as the man who has not lost, I think, a PTO race, Gustav Eden, will claim victory here for the European team. As we can see, poor Sam Laidlow has stopped and is struggling through uh, that aid station there. You're out there with your own thoughts. When we see this pass, I don't think they'll do anything. I think the boys will just run straight ahead. But you can see Sam Laidlow headlong. He looks very, very dejected right now. It was really tough uh, post Collins Cup with my family. They came, they came to the Collins Cup actually, which made it even worse. But um, seeing them down was obviously the hardest thing for me. I think I lost a lot of energy there. Yeah, I put myself in a dark place. Maybe I came across a bit like confident and, and arrogant. There's, you don't have to be arrogant, and uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm learning that. My, my parents moved to France, uh, and so, well, first of all, I didn't speak the language. The first year was really, really difficult. We had some quite big fa family issues, which then led on to financial issues, and we just had to, uh, we had to start from scratch, and that's why it was, I mean, from, for the first 15 years here, we were just like, we were renting a property uh, that we were like renting out, so we didn't even own a house. It was tough, admittedly, like I saw them struggle in, like financially uh, when we moved here, but um, but yeah, I think I really feel that they did it for their kids more than anything else. I'm extremely grateful for that. I um, I couldn't I couldn't really ask for anything uh, else. Well, I always wanted a brother. Um, my parents waited until I was ten to <laughs> to, to um, have a second child. So I certainly learned from him. He, he's naturally very confident. I think I stole some of his confidence. It's more for the younger brothers who look up at the bigger ones, but um, he certainly helped me shape who I am today, and he's a massive inspiration for me. He was a big reason why I moved back home when I was 19. So as I said, I was, I was pretty driven. I knew what I wanted in the sport, so when I was 13, I decided to move away from home and go to boarding school to do triathlon. Christmas present for, to Sam from his little brother. Both my parents and my brother, we're real 
uh, force, I think, together to just be good. I guess from a very early age, I've always been uh, quite driven and known what I wanted. I had a dream very early on, which was to be the best in the sport. And uh, I did my first triathlon when I was four years old, uh, which is probably the youngest ever. <laughs> I've already achieved a lot more than what some people would have thought is possible. I've been in the sport like probably longer than any other 23 year old, but I, I do feel like I've always been on, on the cusp of, of achieving something. And that's a, it's a difficult position because uh, you don't have necessarily like the, the results to back it up or stuff. but. Um, I think we've always had, both my family and I, that, that little bit of hope, and that hope comes mainly from me. People see, see this dream lifestyle that we have but we've we've worked our ass off to get here and we've even along the way like we've managed to stick together and um yeah i think that's i think that's unique i think most people struggle to accept and work with their family members mainly because um you don't choose them but it's it's even more special if you do work through that welcome to my crib <laughs> it's actually not my crib at all. <laughs> people have won the world champs or I don't know, won big races, but few have done it, or if any, being coached by their dad. One's from Belgium to, one's Belgium to England, which is a world record. And then England, France, England, but that's as a relay. The main reason for me asking him to coach me was that I felt like that was, that was the only thing really that could differentiate me from anybody else. Generally, when he's away on camp, he's, it's either him or his dad, isn't it? Cooking for, cooking for everybody. My family, my side of the family, has always been relatively sporty. So my dad was my coach as well for a long time when I was swimming. Yeah, that's right, yeah. If there's too much cabbage on the side, it's not my fault. It's, no, no, it's, it's, it's for visual impact. Uh, and so I then decided then I wanted to go away. I think when I was away, I realised then how what a, what a good coach my dad actually was and how he supported and how he researched and did everything else and what, what sort of the, the training methodologies he used. I, I haven't washed my hands. I better go wash my hands first. <laughs> <laughs> Do pass me your pass me yours now. Bon appétit. I don't think my dad's the best coach in the world, but I definitely think he's the best coach for me, um, and that's that's all that counts. The relationship we have has only got has only brought us together. Um, and at the end of the day, when I hit a low like I did after the Collins Cup, well, I know that I can count on them and that they'll still uh, love me and believe in me just as much as they did after a win. You got any ketchup? Don't be stupid. What's that? It wants ketchup. Having the laid low name sort of thing means. It, it, it's a big tie because if, if that wasn't there, it's a whole sort of team, it's a whole network together. I want, I want our family name to be remembered in the sport and I guess that's why I have a certain pride in, in wearing a, a laid low t-shirt. Those were the ones that would go to prison, they'd get laid low. So maybe that comes back to not following rules. We're a family who will make our own path. When I finished my career, I wanted to have had a bigger impact than the sport itself. And 
enough hard work and, and dedication and just believing in it, you can definitely make it. I'm a guy who dreams a day and not a night. I feel like I have an ability to make my dreams become a reality. Whatever you want, it's in your grasp and you can, you can achieve it. So my hopes are to be the best in the world. Just hope I can do it on as big a scale as possible. I want to be the best.